joined it out in California. Me and my friend of mine that knew he was going to be drafted, so I took off and for my work, and they gave me a leave of absence and went out there and just had a good time for about three months. And then they, I came home, and uh, after a while they called me up, and then I was active. But they finally ended up sending me down to Starkville, Starkville Mississippi, and to college for two months. They had too many, too many applicants at the, at the time, and uh, so they sent us to college. And there, they, there they tried to wash us out, and uh, we had uh, s uh, f seven subjects a day, uh, five days a week. And I mean, they threw it at us. Physics, everything, everything. A lot of stuff I hadn't even had. <laughs> Thank goodness there was some some guys in the in the class that did have, and uh, <clears throat> those uh, civilian instructors didn't care, you know, as long as you get your your points and your and your answers right. Well, I started out in a in a, in a bi wing Sherman, and I went from there from a, a BT-13, a UC-78, which is twin engine. And from there, I went into the, into the B-17. Well, I went from Mississippi to uh, Santa Ana, California for Mississippi was, was just college. Then I went to uh, to uh, uh, Santa Ana, California for a classification where they, they tested you for whether they wanted you to be a pilot or a Navigator, or bombardier, or gunner, or whatever you're to be, going to be. Uh, thank goodness I, I, well, not thank goodness, but I made a pilot, and uh, <clears throat> but I made it through that. I was pretty lucky this whole whole trip, really. And that's what most of it is. Is most of it just luck. I flew out of a, a, a little airport. What do we call? What do we call it? I forget now. But it was near Peterborough. England, flew out of England, and I flew 26 missions over over Germany, three of them over Berlin, actually, and uh, it was all luck. You get through there, they just don't, they just don't hit you, and it's just that simple. Well, they'd wake you up, of course, before daylight, and you'd have breakfast, and we were all in the same in a big room, and they'd be up in front with the boards and telling us about the about what, what we could expect on the mission, and where we we're going, and what we were bombing and what, and uh, it was a, uh, it was pretty good, done pretty well, it really was. In fact, they, they uh, after, after the about the second or third mission, I was the lead pilot, and uh, and I ended up being the the lead bomber in the, the high squadron at lead, uh, actually, uh, on the ever ever air base would put up 36 airplanes. That's a be 12, three 12 ship elements or squadrons that would, uh, would uh, fly formation on each other. The, the lead uh, squadron had 12 ships, the high squadron had 12, and the low squadron had 12, and uh, that's just the way it was. You just flew as tight as you could. My co pilot was uh, Bill Lipsky, and my engineer was Frank Moyer, my, my bombardier. Oh boy, it's been a long time. Afraid, you know what? Uh, you really don't have time to. You got so much to do that you're, you're too busy to be afraid. The only time you're really afraid is when you see them big black puffs out, exploding out outside of you, and hoping that one of them don't get you. We were we're not we're not uh, bothered too much with fighters, not really. The our worst worst worry was that flak. Boy, it was terrible. If it's close enough, you could hear it. You feel it. You feel the ship move, but uh, you couldn't hear it. No. We had a hundred holes one day. We got back from flak, and nobody got hurt. We were uh, <clears throat> very fortunate. Very fortunate. <clears throat> I did a lot of things that that uh, I ended up being the high squadron lead, and uh, we was leaving one target and head back for, for toward England and just getting a hell shot out of us. And uh, I, I said to go on the left, I went to the right. 
Why not? Boy, they ripped me up once that day that you didn't follow orders. Oh, that was your orders. <laughs> I didn't get shot at. I was going left as it was going through a barrage of flak. And I, I wasn't too crazy about that. <laughs> That's what they called it. They'd lay a, uh, they, they, they knew where we were going and what path they were taking. And they'd just flak, keep bursting flak in there, just this person, and you'd fly through it. So you do a certain time, no doubt and then it explodes. And uh, they can hold it pretty darn level. You can see it just coming across right at you as we won't vary a foot. We were not, we're not, we were not, none of us are even hurt. <clears throat> and we were lucky, lucky because a lot of them were. We would fly usually depending on the weather. Because the weather over that continent was, was bad all the time. You had to find a certain certain altitude to fly. To, even to, even we flew one one mission in a in a slot, but it wasn't any, any any wider than this this room. The highest we ever bombed was thir was thirty five thousand, and that, that's extremely high. Our uh, oxygen mask would have ice that was hanging on them. And what what happens on a on a bombing run? The lead ship opens the bomb bay doors. And all the ships open the bomb bay doors at the same time. Then when his first bomb drops out, they drop him. So they all drop at once. Just like Cologne. We bombed Cologne one time. Golly Moses. 30,000 people. I can't imagine how many people that'd be. Can't imagine.